No, it's great. You already feel like a loser when you're walking in this area because you don't have a key to the park. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, that's right. You have to have a key to you the park. You have to have a key. So we'll be going around the edge of the park uh -huh. like the poor trash that we are. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Let me do a quick intro. Okay. All right. Hi. What's up, talkie walkie uh, people? Sorry, I don't have a name for anyone yet. Uh, my guest today is a comedian, a podcaster. You know her from her appearances on Comedy Central. The Late Late Show with James Corden and her podcast, Lady Journey. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Katie Hannigan. Hi, thanks for having me, Marcus. Well, you're welcome. Thanks for, I know it's it's cold, but it's not too bad out. It's not too bad. I'm trying to, to be honest with you, I'm doing like three talkie walkies this week because I don't, I, it's going to be hard to book guests in January. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. February will be bad. January, I'll have to... I mean, today, this is nothing. I would go on a walk like this. I go on, like, an hour walk. Like, every time I have a night off, I go this for, like, a long walk. Wow. I listen to a podcast, a murder yeah, podcast. I love that. So I scare myself, Which, you know? which murder podcast are you listening to? Right now, I'm listening to um, something about this woman i forget what it's called but it was like a woman who's like obviously killed by her boyfriend but it was ruled a suicide it's always the boyfriend or the husband it seems to yeah or an ex or something i or know well you think lover. the cops would get him but they instead they like that guy just got yelled at for he did. riding on the sidewalk he did good for her i know i wonder what she's well, gonna say to us there's a lot of like construction going on so it makes sense but yeah well, these are the kind of people that are in this area. Gramercy, yeah. my neighborhood. It's the by capita, the thinnest neighborhood in New York City. Is that true? I heard someone say that about 10 years ago, so I don't know. So the, I actually never fact-checked it. The very first time I stayed in New York, I stayed right over yeah. here. at some. There's like a hotel here that, uh, that was affordable. Okay. I was here for like 36 hours. I was in a movie that had to premiere here. I wow. felt very cool. That's so um, fantastic. I love stuff like that. Yeah, it was like my That's first time. What was your first time in the city? Um, my first time in the city, I came when I was 17. My aunt, who is about nine years older than me, um, she was doing, I think she was doing some kind of internship with AIDS, oh. something like that. Okay. And so I came and I stayed with her and we stayed in the Bronx and we would come down into the city. We came down around here to see the birthplace of Theodore Roosevelt, who I was really into. Oh, were for you some really? Reason. Oh wow! I just thought he was cute. I was Theodore like, Roosevelt, Teddy, huh? But he's done a lot of atrocities. So has he really? Yeah, he I've did a lot of. He was into like killing Native American people and stuff like that. Yeah. So I've since um, rescinded you know, my I admiration did, um, for him. I've spent a lot of time in Theodore Roosevelt National Park. Oh, where where That's is that? In, um, well, it's it's it stretches a few states. I think, but I went into South Dakota, or sorry, North Dakota. Oh, wow. And I wow. did this show in Medora, North Dakota. It's like every night they, there's an amphitheater there. It's like the Red okay. Rock just built into like nature. Wow. And it's like 3,000 people come every night and they just have like this like cheesy, corny musical, sorry guys, about Theodore Roosevelt pretty much. Wow. And then they have like a comedian or variety act in the middle. I love opening. I love having a musical open for me. You know, that's, that's fun. <laughs> they have like um, it's an it's a I'll have to show you video. It's like crazy. And I actually, you're gonna like this. I speed painted Theodore Roosevelt's face. Oh my god! Like upside down, you know, and then I turned it over, and I was like, whoa! Wow, you have but, so many talents. I didn't no. know that you did speed painting. Well, I just did, I I did it for that act specifically. But you, I'll show you, you when are we're so talented. Ah, stop! You know I what? I can that. I can insert it right here. Pretty good, I think. There you go. I can hear you now, thank you. Okay, that's good. All right. Thank you, Cynthia. <laughs> Every number, I like it. There we go, that looks good. What? Okay, Cynthia, you can be quiet now. It's too much for Cynthia. All right. You're doing great, though. 40. Oh, my gosh. Okay. I got a quick joke. Got a quick joke around. Get serious. Thank you, 30. All right. Almost there, Yvonne. We're almost there, buddy. Tickle, tickle, tickle. Tickle, tickle. Don't move it. Don't move it. Okay, this is no bueno right now, everyone. I'm in panic mode. I'm in panic, I'm getting hives. Okay. <laughs> All right. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You did it! 
All right. Thank you, Medora. I forgot. You, sorry, you might kind of take this. It doesn't look good unless you go like this! Yeah. 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 Perfect. Good. That's great. Yeah, it was kind of fun. Editing is well, hard. Well, you have many talents too. So, oh, thank you. I want to talk to you about when. So, you grew up in Indiana. Yes. Did you start comedy there? I, no, I did start performing there. I had like a long performance background. I did like community theater. Yeah, this is what through. I want to talk about because I did the oh, exact same thing. Yeah, I did I, like grade school, you know, I was in like local plays yeah. and that type of thing and just loved it. I loved theater world. Yes. Did you think you'd be an actress, like move to New York and become an actress on Broadway? Was that the goal? Well, I, when I was in high school, I got into a more avant-garde phase. So I wanted to do something more like maybe mixed media. Ah. When I was in college, I was doing like more multimedia stuff where I was like painting a lot. I uh -huh. was really into like Pipilotti wrist, which what is, is that? such a deep cut. She's a, she's like a I Scandinavian. Like I don't know what her background is, but she's like an artist that does a lot of like video you know video okay. installations and then you know maybe she's there on top of it i was kind of more oh. into performance art for a little while do you have you heard of richard foreman i used to work at his theater oh really i've been We're to not... his home actually <laughs> wow. isn't that strange that's I helped incredible him... i took yeah. uh I, it was like some theater because i went to school for theater yeah and in my class we took a field trip and go watch one of richard foreman's shows and we were both everyone in the class was just like what what is this? Oh, I love it. it. It's so uh, avant-garde and obscure. Yeah, yeah. And there's tons of metaphors. I loved him, and I was really into Richard Skechner also, the living theater, which was like everything oh was environmental, you know? Immersive, right? Yeah, yeah. Wow. But Richard Foreman's theater is like, it used to be just down on 2nd Avenue, St. Uh -huh. Mark's Church. So when I first moved to the city, I, had, I was doing an internship there, and then my little performance troupe that I had, like we would do performances there. Uh-huh. And then I worked at the box office. So I was there for like two years. Wow. So were you in any of his like performances? In no, a, a sadly. Well, the so I was there the last play that they did there. And then he did a play at the public theater with Willem Dafoe, which was so cool. Wow. What was that called? Do you remember? Um, Astronome. I think okay. maybe it was something like that. Willem Dafoe does choose some very like interesting uh, projects. He, he's so right? interesting. I mean, he was in Sex in the City. Yeah, yeah. Like what? Very versatile. Yeah. He's, he's guy got he's got range, right? He does. Yeah, yeah. I love him. But anyway, then what happened? This is the tea on the theater. Please. They, one of the guys that was in Richard Foreman's last play, filed for unemployment because the play ended yeah. and that triggered an audit Ooh. by the IRS and then once they got the audit they couldn't keep the theater open that's, that's what bad. I heard oh, I think man. that's what happened just takes one so just takes one that's too bad so you also you talk about this in your act I don't know if it's true or not but you said you you did mime yes this was so when I was in um, college, I was doing like street performing I love in this. Indianapolis. Was it, it was, just you, like a solo show? I had show? a partner. I had a, another girl. We would dress up as mimes and we would go out on like Saturday night. And we would just be like, we had a little act that we came up with. We what were was doing, the name like, of your troupe? You're like your duo. It was just the two of us. So we didn't have like a, we didn't have like a mime name. Uh huh. But we had like, we were doing like a lot of pantomiming. We had like a 10 minute routine that we would just do like on a loop. And then we would just kind of like play around. And Is this online anywhere? No, this is pre, I'm so old. Like, no, you're, I I'm remember, older than you. no, I'm 37. I'm older than you. Are you really? Yeah, I'm 38. So yeah, oh my God, we're, don't you feel old? Like, no. I, the, you feel old? Um, yeah, I think I do. I don't really feel that old. When I, mean, I, when I moved to New York though, I was going to join the American Mime Theater. <laughs> Wait, is this, so, true? Is this yeah. true? Are you fucking with me? No, no, I'm, I'm so serious. I was like really into it. I was like, this is my big chance. This is when Facebook was first happening. So I uh -huh. connected with Mimes internationally. What? I, I had Who's a like lot of Mime friends. like your favorite Mime? I was into this girl named Jody who was a Mime minister. She and her husband were both Mimes, but they were ministers of the Lord. So they did, they had a whole brand called Mimistry. What? And they had a bunch of kids and they would dress their kids up as Mimes too, which I think is so funny. So you would just do a lot of you wouldn't you wouldn't talk, right? No talking. No talking. And would you paint your face? Would you be in white face? White face. Okay, really? I was, yeah, I was. Did you really have like, into, a, like did you look like you came out of like a French full like, outfit? Full outfit. I loved um, 
Marcel Marceau. Yeah, that yeah. was my inspiration, wow. and I also like Buster Keaton. I love Buster Keaton. Silent comedy was kind of like the vibe of it, wow. which I do in my act a little bit. You know, I have like a little. You have your mannerisms that are yeah. very you, very Katie. If anyone else did them, you do a lot with like the. By the way, we have the same haircut right now. I know. And I think we it's look very great. cute. We look uh, great. <laughs> and you know, yeah, you have a lot of your isms, which are which are great because it's a great way that you. It's like your state. You have great stage presence, but it's a great way of you like showing confidence i think on stage with the way you move around oh. some people just stand still and oh it gets God. scary but like you're loose and fluid which is fun to watch thank you for saying that you're welcome i feel like sometimes i'm a little stiff you know no but i think then you do break out of that and you do like you're like yeah you're, you know i can't really i can't do it but you do it that's weird to do it uh -huh. to you but yeah, yeah you do those things yes yes <laughs> it's very like dramatic yes but it's like also like it's not over the top, but it's minimal. But it's, you it know makes who's a, big, a huge impact. inspiration of mine? Nathan Lane in the Birdcage. Like that's what oh, I want my stand-up to be like. like. Like a gay man from the '60s. <laughs> like, yeah. I always get more toast. <laughs> I don't know. Was it the '60s? More like the '80s, probably, huh? I think the yeah, it was yeah. '80s, early '90s, and yeah. Spartacus was played by um, master character actor. Oh my god! I, now I can't think of his name. I'm like, I think I'm getting dementia because I can't think of names <laughs> well, anymore. you are 37. I'm 37. Um, what about people like Billy the Mime? Um, I, I'm fine with it, but I think that was like a little post my era that I, oh, I remember okay. seeing him and appreciating it. Mm -hmm. Being like, oh, okay, that's fun. But at that point, I was like pretty deep into stand-up. Oh, okay. I had gone, I had gone into a different obsession. Got it. Okay. So after I, when I had my audition for the American Mime Theater... I decided not to go forward with it, even though I was accepted because I oh, couldn't afford. Yeah, thank you. Well, I think they were taking anybody because oh. it seemed like they were not doing Is good. that in the city here? It was. I don't know if it's even still here, but it was around Union Square. And, and you could tell that the people that were in the mime troupe were like out of work actors and not people who were like truly obsessed with the art of mime uh -huh. in an obsessive, like a compulsive way. It's just, it's, it's so fascinating because like, where do you go from, like, do you go streets what's, before me? Like, then what's, exactly. what's the pinnacle mind? Like, is it Vegas? Right. Is it like... Exactly, exactly. There's not a practical application. It's like improv in a well, way where it's like... You can do like, like it's a, a one-man or one-person show about it. You could do, yeah, you could definitely do Vegas, I feel. Or, you know, if you could or incorporate magical elements. I also love magicians. Oh, yeah? It, it's the same, like, thing to me where I love, like... The art of misdirection and yes. like showman. Well, it's, it's jokes too, right? It's misdirection. Yeah. It's it's yeah. very similar. Oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, but, magic's fun. Yeah. Uh, people think I never. I don't do any magic, but a lot of people get confused because I used to juggle. So people are like, "Oh, yes. you must do magic." Or they'll you're just kind think, of in the circus world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going. I'm going to see the big up. Do you like go to the circus? I'm seeing the big up the I circus tomorrow. I haven't been in but... years, but I I love it. I love the spectacle of the circus. Yeah, it makes me tired. Really? Yeah, I just get there. It's I just exhausting. Get tired for yeah. some reason. I'm just like, ugh. I yeah. went to a circus in Russia. Oh, fascinating. Yes. They're probably really good circuses. It was really good, but it was also really bad because they don't have like animal rights. Oh yeah. <laughs> so we went, like the whole lobby was just full of like baby tigers on yeah. trucks. Oh, and people no. were like taking photos with them. I and mean, that's kinda cute, but like that's also terrible. They were like just kinda all the animals were very sedated. Like there was bears driving cars, but they were just like driving into the wall. <laughs> oh, are you serious? Yeah, we were like, what oh, is my this? God. <laughs> that would be, I mean, I would love to see that, but I would be, my heart would break for the animals just because they shouldn't be driving cars. Oh yeah, there were tears. There yeah. were tears that like the elephants looked really like, the elephants were in bad shape. Ooh, but the tricks were great. Well, that's nice. You, you got to give a little, you know, yeah, you no pain, no gain. Give, it's a give and take, good for them. Um, my wife has a big problem with going to the circus and seeing animals. She's like a yeah. vegan animal rights person. Yeah. Uh, so it's a little, I can't take her. So she's going to sit this one out. Yeah, that's, I get it. I get it. I, I do too. I do too. Um, so we also, like I brought up my wife. You're with Mike Vecchione. Mike. Yes. Very good comic. Love he's, him. He's one of my favorite comics. <gasps> oh, that's I nice. think he's so, does he know who I am? Do you think? Yes, I'm sure he, he does. does. Oh. Yeah. We're like, hey, I'm gonna go do this podcast with Marcus. He's like, oh, cool, I love that guy. I can see a dog pooping right now. Oh, I love it. <laughs> 
Um, my, <laughs> so funny. But like we have a similar age difference. That's right. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, That's so true. I think we have the exact age difference between us and our partners. Is well, it 14 I got, years? Well, I got 15. Okay. Okay. It's like it's like 14 and 11 months. We're so like we round up. 13 and three quarters exactly because we're our birthday's on the same date the okay that's kind yeah. of fun yeah it is it, fun. so what what is like the biggest like challenges when you're with someone who's you know 14 years older than you do you find and then what's like one of like the best things about it because i can well, tell you from experience she knows how to do everything yeah i feel like there's no challenges really because okay. it's like I think that we're at an age where we're both really similar. Okay. But, you know, I'm I'm interested to see like when I'm 60 and he's 74, I think like that's when it's going to be challenging if uh -huh. I'm like, you know, have to like cart him around in like a little wheelchair, which <laughs> I will. Yes, you that'd be so um, fun. Yeah, but I feel like there's we don't really have any type of like disconnect as far as like age mm -hmm. but the, but the things that are nice about it is it's nice to have somebody that's like you know um an emotionally mature person sure who you can like confide in and get like emotional support from you know like yeah. that's that's nice and mike is like a very like zen centered person and i love that about him and i think that like you know he definitely wasn't like that when he was my age sure yeah i i think that's very true with my relationship with Gina, I mean, we've been together for 13 years. Um, wow, that's so great. Yeah, it's that's nice. so great. I've been married for over 10. It's kind of fun. Um, but yeah, but yeah, she like do our taxes. Like she knows how to do everything. Oh, that's great. It's, it's so good. She's had so much life experience. Um, so I just like defer to her for most things, which is nice. You know, like I don't. I guess if I if I ever lost her though, I'd be like, like <laughs> fairly lost. Like, I want to experience things that I like to do with her. Yes. But sometimes the things I like to do, like, she has no interest in. Yeah, we do have that. But I think it's more because, like, Mike's interests are very masculine and mine are pretty feminine, which is, you know, you always, I think as, like, a strong woman, you want to be like, I could like football, but I'm like, I just don't. Yeah. I don't like football. I don't like boxing. I don't like mafia podcasts. So, right. like we sometimes yeah, podcast this yeah way. like he loves he's very like into the masculine arts and that's fine but like we sometimes will just like literally lay in bed we had to upgrade netflix so we could like lay in bed hold hands and watching a separate show that's funny, <laughs> that's funny. yeah i love like you know i really do love like i love the gilded era okay i love tea time I love like pictures of baby animals, uh -huh. you know, like <laughs> sure. I love all that stuff. And then he, he, for him, it's the same as for me, like what football is or boxing. Sure. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I, so. Yeah. I mean, same, like I wouldn't call it like masculine and feminine with Gina and I, cause I like, there's, I like a lot of odd, you know, like, I like, I like watching wrestling and she doesn't really like wrestling, you know? Yeah. I, sometimes I watch yeah. UFC stuff and she doesn't, you know, but m mainly it's just like, I'm an extrovert. She likes to be at home with the cats. Oh, oh, you're yeah. extroverted. That's interesting. You don't think so? No, I'm I'm introverted. Okay. I always I always feel like I wish that I was extroverted because uh -huh. it seems like life is so much like more like easier. Like the world is your oyster. If you're uh -huh. like out there, like yes, being friendly, <laughs> yeah. you know. Well, I think I put myself in situations where like I have to be extroverted, but of course everyone loves like alone time and just like being yes chill. Um, and I also, I also am not the type of person that like, this might be hard for some people to believe, but I, I don't need attention all the time. Yeah. You know, I'm not like seeking yeah. it out. Like I'm never volunteering in shows like where, like someone needs like an audience member or something. Oh my God. I know. Like, that's the nice thing about doing stand up in a way because you can be like, oh, I get it. I, I've got, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to be exactly. like over talking people at a party. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you remember the first joke that you ever wrote? Yes, I do. Can you tell it? <laughs> It was, uh, it, it actually, I feel like it's pretty funny because I did have a comedic instinct, but it was like short guys, which I always date short guys uh -huh. I, and I love them. I think they're so cute. Short Kings. Short Kings. I, I love them. Like no what, one what over 5'10". What is it about? Oh, really? No one over 5'8". Dang. Really. Well. I just like that. Well, first of all, I'm short. I'm 5'4". Okay. So I like somebody that's not like so giant next to me. Like uh -huh. I think that's weird. You're my wife's height. Yeah, like, yeah. I and I like, like, I like a stocky looking guy. I think it's just the body type that I'm attracted to, like, sure. kind of buff, you okay. know? 
Um, but my joke was like, short guys, they, they get mad so easily. They're like, yeah, I'm short, so what? I'm like, I didn't even see you there. <laughs> so I was like, it was kind of something, but you could That's see funny. like, it's very like, yeah, I like um, that. basic, you know, but I was also like 22 when I wrote it. So it's like, good. that was my... That was my, I was basic at that time. Well, sure. I mean, that's, that's funny though. I think the first joke I ever wrote was, um, it's, it's not good, but it's like, you ever see homeless people, uh, <laughs> it's already bad because there there's already a victim in the joke. Yeah. You ever see homeless people like pushing shopping carts, man, homeless people are always shopping. <laughs> that was it. It was like, so do, like, maybe they'd have money for a house if they weren't always Shopping, I don't know. That's good, but I see, I do see the um, comedic <laughs> premise, which is a misunderstanding. Yes, exactly. Which is, I think, the funniest, I think that's the funniest, um, like, seed, hey. you know? Well, I never, I don't think I ever did it on stage. I think I did it on stage once to show people that it was a bad joke, like the first <laughs> one I ever did, but uh, I never, yeah. like, did it seriously. But yeah, it's fun, it's funny, I mean, we were talking about this last night at the cellar, like, you had a special come out and now you're rewriting an entire yes. hour, yes. which is like such a, like, first of all, congrats on releasing Thank you. material. Yeah. I haven't done it. I'm so scared to do that because I don't want to have to start over. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I mean, I, I taped it two full years ago uh -huh. and for the full first year, I was really just doing the same jokes. And then I would like, you know, I'm always like switching stuff of like adding a tag or like switching something out, yeah. you know? And now I have like a bunch of stuff where I can just do a complete like 15 minute set of like all the new stuff, which is like, hello, um, which is like a great feeling, you know? Uh -huh. Yes. But it just, it, it feels like it takes, I also think I have like a little bit of OCD, um, you know, in terms of my writing where it's uh -huh. like, it takes so much, you know, like whenever it's like a thousand pounds of pressure to like create yeah. a diamond, like yeah. in order yeah. to come up with one good bit, it's literally like a thousand hours of me being like, I'm an idiot. I'm so stupid. What am I doing? Who am I? Where am I? That's you know, a great like analogy. watching, transcribing, doing an exercise, you know, like yeah. getting something here. Like I'm trying to write so many jokes right now uh -huh. and like nothing's, co nothing's yeah, coming. Yeah. Uh, same with me. I, 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 yeah, I mean, you heard the new bit I was working on last night with yeah. the, uh, yeah. The speech impediment bit and yes, then the yeah. vegan bit. I'm really trying to talk about my wife being a vegan and an animal rights person. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, but I, it's just it's so hard. And I'll I'll block out time to write and I'll sit down in my office. But just sometimes it's not like nothing comes. It, yeah, but it's too contrived. I'm trying to force myself yeah. to write, and you can't really do that. I feel like some yeah. of the best jokes I come up with are just like right before I fall asleep. I like write them down and then yeah. wake up in the morning like, oh yeah, this could be something. Yeah, I think that if I if I can like get myself into a rhythm where I'm like doing a lot of like watching comedy, doing writing exercises, trying to write, you know, just kind of getting my brain in that like thinking yeah. pattern, which takes like hours, you right. know? Sure. Um, like then if I'm able to do all of that, then suddenly the perfect joke will appear in my mind, like a download. Uh -huh. You know? Oh, I so love it's that. like yeah. that's the kind of magic that I'm like trying to orchestrate and I get like one every six months. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> it, it, takes, it takes so much time and I don't think there's anyone that can really like turn up material that fast, you know? Right, I know. It's like you see these people on Netflix that do like special after special and you're like, I mean, it was fine. Yeah. I guess like if yeah. I had never seen comedy and I really liked you <laughs> as a person, right. I would be into this. Right. But it's kind of, it feels like the art form is like a little bit shifted now because like content is such just, a thing. Yeah, just kind of fast, unfinished, undeveloped material gets yeah. maybe posted too quickly. Maybe, in, I don't know, like everyone always says like the crowd work clips are killing comedy. But I don't really know if that's true because I think we're in the middle of like a comedy boom at this point. Yeah, for sure, and for sure. And I think the clips and the crowd work are only adding to it. But if you go see a show and you're expecting all crowd work, you're going to be disappointed unless you're watching like, uh, like Todd Berry or, um, like Ian Bag or someone who's like who's yeah. like really good, 
at that muscle because it's such a hard thing to do. Well, crowd work, I think, is inherently lowbrow because there's only so many things that you can say unless you're fully unpacking something, unless your skill is not really stand up, but it is like improvisation. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it's kind of a different skill set. But, you know, I enjoy doing like, you know, crowd work shows and stuff I, like I, I, I like to do that but like I, it's just never going to be I'm not passionate yeah. about it in the way that I am of like really getting a great joke and like performing it like yeah. well that makes sense so do you like to write I know you've done a few of the roast battles do you like to write roast jokes I used to I used to love those I think like the the thing about the roast for me was that like I'm kind of like an understated person you know I'm like hi like just c coming in with my bubbly personality, setting others at ease. And so like doing the like roast for me was more about like taking back my power of like, I can be nasty and I can uh -huh. like, you know, say like actually, you know, my friends, I'm battling my friends, but it's like, yeah. you know, that's just, that, that's just like a pretense of, so you can like really eviscerate them. Sure. But so I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed like the meanness of it uh -huh. and I enjoyed like being mean in a way where it's like not being taken seriously right. you know it's just like friends, an expression right. of exactly. like you know of like a, you, the shadow self that you don't get to like uh, exercise in everyday life right it's true and you're such a nice person too that it's not your nature to be mean in a joke yeah yeah and I like being nice I would never like I, I'm never even mean in a joking way I find that to be like really cruel oh, okay and like lazy you know yeah. people are like nice jacket you're like do you hate me <laughs> yeah I don't <laughs> like, like that like, I don't like that either like let's talk about George Santos yeah or something, you know oh he's on cameo now I saw I've been seeing him he's all over TikTok yeah and I am just I just can't wait I can't wait until he's what, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think he'll be at the I'm, cellar? I'm sure. Oh, I man. feel like he he's actually, you know, if he doesn't ride this to make more money, then he's even stupider than right. I had already thought. I think he's going to be in jail pretty soon, don't you think? I do. I, You know, I hope so. Yeah. That's I crazy. hope so. My gosh. Um, I tried to buy a cameo today from him, but he was, like, unavailable. Cameo is such a cry for help. It's like, I'm not doing well. <laughs> like, I really, I, I did, like, I joined Cameo during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I did pretty good. Like, I, I, my Cameos were, like, 10 minutes long, though, because I felt bad that people oh, paid. Oh, yeah, I that's just, like, nice. Went, wait, yeah, I mean, it's probably well, way too long. you're an artist. I mean, oh. for, for us, where you're like, oh, I'm doing, like, I'm actually creating a piece of art. Like, that's great. But, like, if you're a legit celebrity, sure. it's like, maybe you should talk to your agent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get on some projects. Yeah, yeah. I, I see that. I mean, do you do any of, like, pa you have Patreon, right? I have Patreon only for my podcast Lady Journey. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I don't have anything that's just for my own work, but I have, like, an email list, you know? So it's, like, I'm just still trying to get people to, like, come out and, like, that dog loves me. That dog, <laughs> dog does love you. Yeah. Me, I guess. <laughs> um, like, still trying to get people to, like, oh, just kind of support this, me. This block stinks. I think it was that dog. Oh, really? I think it was that baby. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's hard to grow that email list and to get people to come out to shows. I'm it's hard. Just starting to headline rooms now, and it's like, yeah. oh, oh, yeah. like, where are all these people? I know, I know. So, but I, it's still fun. Like I'm still having a good time on the road, and the people who come to the shows seem to have a really good time. So yeah, come on up. And then you, yeah, it's great. Um, so are, you're hitting the road a little bit now, trying to build. Like so, you're featuring. Um, well, I was just doing like, I was, I had like a little chunk of stuff that I was doing August, September, uh -huh. and then went through mid October. So now I'm back in town and I'm actually writing. Oh, okay. So I kind of, I won't, I won't really be going back out again. I have like, I do like, like winter shows. Like I'll do like Key West, Aruba. Oh yeah. And then I'm going back out again in March. Nice. So that's kind of my pattern. I like to have like summer and winter. I like to stay in town and write mm -hmm. and just like focus even some days, like, not even doing a show and just focusing on the writing. Oh, that's good. And then, like, hitting the road in, like, the spring and the fall. Oh, that's really fun. So you write your yeah. comedy. Are you talking about, like, writing TV shows or your, your comedy? I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing, like, stand-up right now. And I'm also kind of trying to do some, I'm trying to explore social media in a way that's fun for me. That, okay. that I can, like, apply my stand-up to. Ah. Um, so, like, 
like I was doing some doing some stuff like making fun of like Jeff Bezos, you know, it's like that wouldn't ever really work on stage. Sure. But it was like kind of a fun thing to do. Okay. So I want to explore that short form a little bit. And then, yeah, I mean, hopefully I'd love to write like other more stuff but it feels like everything takes everything takes 100 years well you and mike have so. been putting out like some sketches that have been really yes. fun to watch oh thank you thanks for saying that yeah who comes up with like these ideas or is it a collaborative we've done two rounds so the way we come up with them is we're like we just sit and we just riff together uh -huh. we were trying to riff on like classic like um relationship cliches you uh -huh. know like the wife is like like pretending she's pregnant, you know, or something. I guess that's not really a classic relationship cliche, but, and then we try to like script it from there and try okay. to go like, sketch writing I find really challenging because it's, it's inherently different from joke writing. Very different, right. But you know, I've done it, I've done it for years, but I still don't have the muscle in the same way I do as like joke writing, but mm -hmm. it's nice to like try to force your brain to think in a different way. It is, yeah. And I, I, I started doing a lot of sketches, not a lot, like I cut like six or seven sketches. Mm -hmm. And then my agent was like, hey man, these sketches are great, but they're not gonna get people to come to your show. Oh. I was like, I was like, oh really? He's like, yeah, like they, people wanna see you like at your show, like having fun. Like, I was like, cause they don't know mm -hmm. what you do on stage now. And I was like, okay, true, but what if I just wanna create a sketch? And the, the yeah. call to action isn't to come to my show, but just to like, like art, <laughs> you know? Right. It's not always like a money grab at the end of every uh, piece of content. Yeah, it's 100%. Well, I'm an actor also. Yes. And I like do auditions and stuff. And yes, you were in Succession. I that was in Succession. That's fun to see you on there. Thank you. Yeah. Well, very small part. I was that's, in the background, but it was. No, you had a line, had didn't you? I had some lines. Yeah. I had several lines. But um, like I did those sketches because I was like, you know, this is a fun thing that I can do to keep my acting going, keep my writing going. Yeah. Maybe it'll pop off on social media. Maybe it exactly. won't. Exactly. You and never like, know who's going to see it. Yeah. It's all like every. I think it's really like a little bit ass backward to. Um, be like, well, this is like this is a means to an end because you don't know what's gonna pop off. Oh, that's so true. Yeah, so like true. you can kind of. I think there's a way to kind of like be like, these are the people I want to reach, and this is what we have in common, and this is what mm -hmm. they like, and what I like, and what I want to talk about, maybe. Uh -huh. But, but I don't know. You can also just you're throwing shit at the wall either yeah, way. Yeah, you right? are. Speaking of shit, it's gonna start to smell like shit. Just this is it, where the bad smell it, was. Yeah, just wait. It's gonna hit us. I think it was. Yeah, it was right around here by that gate. Oh, it's like right here. Oh my smell. God. Yeah. See? Something's bad over here. I think it's the plants no, or the it's pollen. A, it's a leachy uh, seed from the tree. Oh. They make the tea out of it. Oh, oh my God. Thank you. Some of them are crushed. Uh, That's Oh, what those it little is. white balls? Yep. Yeah, oh. Oh my God. Thank you. Uh, there. Here they are. I see it. Oh yeah. Okay. So those. A lot, a lot wow. Of know what they do and come by and they forage and they make tea out of it. Really wow. fascinating. Wow. Thank yeah. you for so sharing you that. An old Asian woman. Down. <laughs> That's <laughs> what she's doing. <laughs> she doesn't oh have scoliosis. Well, how she's just picking that? up tea. Wow. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. very much. The rest of this stuff is dog shit. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's funny. I love that. Was that was great. You know, cool I love New York I love meeting people in the city. I do too. You never See, know. See, maybe you're more extroverted than you think. I'm well, so my I I got really into the Myers Briggs personality types about 3 or 4 years ago. Oh, I don't know even what is oh, this. Oh my god. So Myers Briggs is the that's the it's like a it's like a test. It tests the way you interpret your surroundings and then it categorizes people. I think there's like 16 personality types. And the la like one of the main characterization is introverted or extroverted. Uh -huh. So I'm an INFJ, which means introverted, um, intuitive, feeling, judging. But that's a rare personality type. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. And <laughs> it's but it's the extrovert of the introverts. So okay, I'm so like the I'm most extroverted of all the introverted people. Yeah, Myers Briggs is. I mean, it's kind of. The, the people that came up with it were psychologists, uh -huh. so there's that, but it was yeah. also like years ago. there's science ago. behind it. Here's this kind of a science. I think they came up with it because they had like a day school in their home, uh -huh. and they were kind of analyzing the way the children process. Interesting. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting, and it's, you know, it's it's in the genre of, you know, astrology, I, in the way that, 
we're all just like floating on a rock in space and we're uh -huh. like grappling, yes. you know, grasping for like some kind of like meaning or like self-reflective information, you okay. know? Crazy. Interesting. Wow. So with all your background in, in theater and mime and now stand-up and writing and sketches, do you ever think about doing like a one-woman show about your life? Or anything like that? Yeah, like I mean, to go to I Edinburgh like and... The thing about one-woman shows is I feel like you need like a trauma to like mine. Otherwise it's like just, look at me, you know? <laughs> that, I mean, that could be your thing <laughs> is that you don't have a hook or well, you don't have the trauma and that could yeah. be your show. And it's just like, that could be fun. I'd rather do um, like a short film, I think. Okay. Like a, a short film about you or just like... Yeah, just like write a short film. Maybe it's like a, a grain of truth about me and then like film that uh -huh. and, and have that. Okay. Like I have this fun idea that I was, I'm thinking about developing this like um, a documentary about me. Like don't steal my idea if I'm you not, hear this. I'm not. Or they, um, yeah, don't steal. Don't steal it. Don't but steal. like I'm like trying to get hot, you know, so uh -huh. I can like pop off on Instagram. So just like a documentary about like a quest to be hot. Oh, so fun, would right? you be a character? I would actually, I think I would do it like almost in a way of like Nathan for you, where it's yeah. like, I'm playing myself, but I'm also operating in a way that's you're like a little facetious, you know? self-aware enough to know that the camera's on, right? Like, so yeah, I'm that's like, interesting. Whatever that, so you, okay, you want to like become an influencer almost? Yeah, become like, become, I guess that, I guess it would be like, you know, I'm a comedian, but you know, I'm struggling with my reach, mm -hmm. but now everything's on Instagram. Like right. I know if I can become hot, then I'll be able to tell my jokes, wow. my um, self-deprecating jokes about like not being perfect, even though it's like, it's kind of moot at that point, but uh -huh. that's, I guess like kind of also part of the fun of it. That's so cool. Um, so, I think that's great, by the way. Something fun like that. I think, like, for me, I I really like live performance with stand-up. Yeah. But yeah, I like that, too. Yeah, like, as far as, like, more of, like, an artist, I like the I like the medium of film more. Okay, that makes sense. I like that. I mean, you could also do, like, multimedia in a live show, right? That's true. That's true. Um, I, I like when people do, um, like, one-person shows and they have, like a, like, a background with, like... The actual, like, footage of something they're talking yeah, about. Is that yeah. kind of, like... I like that. I didn't mean to cut you off, sorry. No, no. I gotta stop doing that. Um, I know, I'm, I'm so bad at it. I'll talk over anybody. I'm like, I need to be heard. I know, I know. It's coming out. I was, um. We're about to go past the lychee tree again. Uh, at least now I know what it is and it makes me feel better because I thought it was like human feces for a while. So did I, and because I was like, people uh, do poop in this area. Uh, people yeah. really do poop. So I heard Julia Roberts lives around here. <gasps> really? Yeah, when, well, in 1999 oh she did when my dad and I stayed over here. I've never seen her over here. I've never seen any celebs in this area. Oh, you haven't? No. My wife today, she walked by Caitlin Collins at LaGuardia. That's She's on cool. CNN. I did see um, Tariq one time at, at LaGuardia, which was pretty. That's cool. Um, f yeah, from The Tonight Show. Sure. And also from The Roots. Yes, I, I rode the train with him once. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Uh, yeah, I, well, we love to hang out down here on Irving. There's like so many cute, restaurants and coffee yeah. shops so we'll go there like we'll go out to eat there but never really never seen anybody interesting yeah i'm trying to think of who there's anyone i've seen recently i don't think i have I really don't think i have which is kind of disappointing think, oh i saw um the guy who i cannot think of this guy's name those are some big dogs Katie. oh my god oh yeah these dogs i see these dogs in the neighborhood all the time you do this type of dog is actually well suited to living in a small space because they can't really like run because they're so big they're massive i know aren't they cool they're so cool i love them um the guy who was in ray donovan oh, that guy yeah i saw him at um Veselka. Which we love. We love to go there, but we have we don't Wait, go there. Wait, what kind of food school. is that? Is that Mediterranean? Um, it's Ukrainian. Ukrainian, okay. Yeah, it's like pierogies, blintzes, amazing latkes. The latkes are the, I mean, they're the wow. best I've ever had. They're oh, so crispy, so good. I, I also just think I wouldn't recognize a lot of celebrities. I know. I'm so like obsessed with that. myself and like just completely <laughs> spinning out of my own mind all the time. I could be like talking to Ben Stiller. <laughs> I'm like, sir, out of the way, please. Yes. yes. I'm having a moment. I am an artist. Let me go. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, because were you ever into like pop culture growing up? 
Not so much. I had more of like a niche interest in like comedic films. Like I was really obsessed with that film Clue. I will. I could like the murder mystery. Clue? Yes. Oh. I'm calling it a film, like it's a piece of art, but like I, <laughs> uh, sure. I would just watch it like three times a day and just like recite it. Flames, flames. Like in high school, you did this. Um, more like middle school, I okay. think. Yeah, that was when I was really into it. Okay. When I was in high school, I was more into. I was into like, kind of like stoner culture and like strange art. Did you get into like fish and like the Grateful Dead? Um, more like I was into like Ani DeFranco ah. and like Tool. Oh, those were like that was like the edge of my spectrum. That's, so it was like folk did not see and like a coming. little hardcore. Yeah, did not see that coming at all. I went all. to a couple concerts. Tool. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, it was very exciting. So you like hard rock? Yeah, I think at that time I don't like it so much now, but at that time it was like a good. It was like a good way to kind of like get out some aggressive energy I was uh -huh. feeling. You know that, that like angst. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, that's cool. Like if a guy from Tool walked by, I wouldn't know who that was. Trent Reznor. Wouldn't yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you that still I have would, a thing for him. I don't know that I would recognize him on the street because I feel like they're so performative that you know when you see them in like like in concert or something, yeah. they're like you know kind of like have the hair and yeah. the you know. Yeah, that makes sense. And also, like, there's so many new famous people because of social media yeah and like you know people are like all obsessed with certain people i haven't heard of in my entire life it's wild because before that wouldn't happen all oh, these big dogs again here, here we go here we go they're so cute look at them. i know they're so massive they, they are look... they mastiffs they... is that the type of dog i feel i don't think that massive. is massive massive they're massive oh massive like they're big but, but i think they but but is are it, they mastiffs? What though? does that mean? Is that a type, of dog? type of dog? Oh, I don't know anything about dogs. I, they look old and dirty, though. Yeah, they did. Mm -hmm. um, wrapping up, I wanted to ask you real quick before I let you go. Uh, we're both obsessed with the black alien. He's this guy <gasps> oh my on God. Instagram, on TikTok. Who, I forgot that we bonded over that. He is incredible. He He's, for those of you who don't he's know. He's transforming his body. Into an alien. He's cut off two of his fingers on his left hand, so he only has these three. Yeah. I think he's cut off his nose, his ears. He's, he's got a lot of silicone implants. Yeah. He, he got banned from Instagram. Oh, he did? Yeah. He had over a million followers. Yeah, I think, I don't know, I don't know if he was just like reported because it was like self-mutilation. Oh. I guess it could be considered that, I mean, but. I he is doing a lot of crazy. I and mean, he said he wanted to cut off his legs and, yeah. and, and, and have metal legs. Yeah, like, he wants to become a full-on alien. Yeah. Which, look, more power to you. If it makes you happy, you're not hurting anybody. But there's also more than one person like him. Like, I saw another guy yeah. with his nose like that and no ears. And, like, I'm like, well, it's... It's, it's interesting. He has the most body modification in the entire world. He must. So it's like the bar is always going to keep be, keep going like more and more and more, you know, for like extreme body modification. Like I remember a few years ago, it was like, and his whole body's tattooed, and like now the eyeballs are tattooed. Right. It's like, and at the time that was like as like, far as you could go. Now his tongue split. He's got teeth. Yeah. His teeth are different colors. His eyes are different colors. Yeah, he has his teeth like filed down. I think. Yeah, and they're blue. It's kind of it, you know, it almost feels like in a way where it's like, ugh. It's like using steroids, you know? It's like, yeah. just let somebody feel special and mm -hmm. all they have to do is just like tattoo their whole body. What if he thinks he is an alien, you yeah. know? Yeah, and, like, well, he, he doesn't feel French. comfortable in his, he is, but he's yeah. Mexican, right? He's born in France, but he's Mexican because he goes to Mexico oh, and he speaks. In... I didn't know that. I thought he was just going to Mexico because, oh, I think maybe he's Spanish. Okay. Actually, no, I don't know. I thought he was just, going there because the surgeries are illegal oh, in like maybe. France. Oh, maybe. Maybe that could be. Yeah. That could be. But like in Mexico, they're like, sure. <laughs> but he's a very talented tattoo artist. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he does a lot of cool tattoos. I, I could see like he probably has like a lot of women that are really into that. Now, would you, know? you like as a woman, would you be into that? Like, is that a thing you know, that you that's could? That's too much for me. I can't. Ha I need to be like a little bit the star of the show. There you go. You know, like I can't be like, and you've met my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, he's like yeah. <laughs> speaking French. <You> just <laughs> like... <laughs> like, uh, he's a lot. <laughs> Because that type of personality, it's like, you know, it seems like, you know, you date a guy who's like really into hats, you know, yeah. and you're like, no, nah, not for me. Not a hat guy. Not for me. Walking no. in like, I'm here. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> sir. <laughs> That's so funny. 
All right, Katie, where can people find you on Instagram, on TikTok? I'm at Katie Hannigan Forever on Instagram and TikTok. Also, please check out my podcast, Lady Journey. Lady Journey with Sarah Tomahash. Is that how you say your last name? It's Talamash. Talamash. Pretty close. You're pretty close. I tried. You That's, did great. Thank you. She's thanks for having me. This, hey, was, thanks, this was fun. I'm glad we actually finally got able to do it because I've been trying to do in. Yeah, we sure got it. Yeah, I'm sure did. <laughs> sure did. We, we did. walked around the same park. I wonder how many times we did. Maybe I should keep a counter. Oh, I feel like we did about 12 or 13 times. Okay. Yeah, that's probably that's about bad. right. Not bad. No. Where are you off to now? Um, I'm going back home. I'm going home. I haven't. I did my workout class today, so I oh, haven't nice. done writing yet. So okay. I'm gonna get. Oh, I'm gonna get my little tea, hunker down. Nice. And try to um, try to write some roast jokes about Elon Musk. I think oh, Elon that's maybe fun. Onto something. Where yeah. are you? Where are you tonight? Any spots tonight? Or are you no just gonna spots. write? Nice. Night off. Nice. Yeah. So oh. I'm very excited. And then this weekend, I'm gonna be out and about i'm going to when is this airing um probably next wednesday oh okay well never mind but where where were you i was gonna say i'm at the new york comedy club stamford oh so that'll very be fun. fun are you doing that's your full show there no i'm just doing um showcase i oh, guess very fun that's yeah. cool yeah all right well check i mean you post your dates on your instagram on your website uh, on my link tree which on is your link tree yes katie hannigan forever just i love it. it thank you katie thank you Talk to walkie.